And yes, you're absolutely right, it's flexible, it's modular. So we will design this system, we will spec each of the machines around the customer's requirements to give them the processing that they need to do for their production. This is the biggest manufacturing system I have seen Probably to date, actually, Barry, we're here at Prima Power Factory in Turin. Now, this machine we're reviewing, it goes from here all the way back to that tower back there. Now, can you please walk me through the process of what uh, is happening to the parts? So, this is what we call our punch shear bend system. It's one of many different systems that we can do. We are starting at the far end behind us with a tower uh, containing raw material sheets, uh, three meters by 1.5, that are then processed through this line to make parts out of similar materials and dissimilar materials from other cassettes uh, either in series production or in kit form. So what we've got is we have the tower with the raw materials, they are then loaded into what is behind us then is a punch and shear system. The punch and shear will add punched features, holes, forms, tapped features and then when it has finished processing all of these out of the mother sheet, the shear will then cut each and every blank out of that sheet using common edges wherever possible so that we have blanks of the parts then ready to be processed. And those parts are butted up against each other and they get split by the they shear. They get split by the shear, yeah. And then each and every one of those parts then makes its way through the system. We then have what we call a bend turning device which will flip the part upside down if it needs. We then come through to the panel bender and the panel bender is bending all of the edges um, in sequence until we finished up with a finished part which here is then taken away and stacked up. Beautiful, as easy as that coming out just the other end. We've got some parts behind us that were made uh -huh. just recently. Yep. And how long, we've got six parts here, they're all made out of one sheet. They were all made out of one sheet, yeah. They're all the same thickness, they're all the same material grade. And we saw them coming through, and it's amazing how three and a half, uh, three meters by one and a half meters, you can get six big parts coming out of it. Six big parts come out of that. Uh, they came out in a, just over five minutes, so I mean, that's how productive that system is. But what we actually work with on systems like this is to make sure we get the maximum sheet utilization. And the software behind it is very clever at doing that. So. Generally speaking, these lines will go into fully automated manufacturing systems, people with large volume for processing, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of parts. And quite often, what we're aiming for is to make sure we use as much of that mother sheet as possible. Many customers have what we call small, mass-produced parts that they just produce all the time. They manufacture them every single day. So what we can do is set our system to use these parts and fill in any blanks in the sheet, any bits of unused material, so we get the absolutely maximum utilization out of the sheet with little scrap. And it's so important to minimize wastage when you've got those kinds of volumes, mm -hmm. because they start to make a real difference. They do, yes. But those kinds of volumes, so we're talking about from one sheet, you've got six different parts though. Now you guys call this a flexible manufacturing system. There's kind of two sides to that. There's the fle flexible in that it's modular, and you could put an extra punch in or yep. a buffer or another bend but it's also flexible because you don't need to have the volumes of a single part you can be making six different parts of in course. a slightly lower volume yes of course it's it this is set up at the moment what we've produced there is a kit so uh, very often we'll set a system up to make a kit of parts that are uh, all go into one assembly. So let's say, for example, the central heating boiler. Uh, all the common parts that go into that central heating boiler. Or we could produce thousands and thousands of the same part. It really depends on the customer's requirements. And it's flexible because that part can be a different design, it can be a different material thickness, it could be an entirely different product. We've got the material stored in, in the tower, or we could have the massive night train system, and it's just a matter of what you want to process through. The machinery is configured around it. And yes, you're absolutely right, it's flexible, it's modular. So we will design this system, we will spec each of the machines around the customer's requirements to give them the processing that they need to do for their production. So if you want to go bigger and better, you can do. Oh, absolutely, yes. Let's yeah. talk about actually the, the more kind of inner, work, inner workings of the machine. So. Mm -hmm. You mentioned at some point we're going to, the, earlier that, that this works during shadow time. Yes. Yeah. Now, how do you try and make? How do you try and use that shadow? What is the shadow time and how? Shadow how do you make time use of it? is basically where every ele element of the machine is working at the same time. So we have no dead time. We don't have a machine waiting for a sheet of material to be delivered or waiting for a part to be delivered. You optimize within the software to make sure that every single element of that system is feeding material through, is producing parts, that nothing comes to a standstill waiting for anything else. Because with a, a large scale system like this, what you need it to be doing is producing parts. You don't want any dwell, dwell time, any hanging time, where something is waiting for something else. And that's what we mean by shadow time. Shadow time is things working in the background, 
in readiness for other parts, the main production parts of the system, to be making pieces. Because with these kinds of volumes, it's all about the bottlenecks. Yes. Because yeah. you might have the packaging at the end, which is sometimes pa even the packaging can be a bottleneck. You've got all yeah. these complicated machinery doing working away as fast as possible. The last thing is someone wrapping it up. So yeah. Yeah. it's all about minimizing that bo those bottlenecks. So if, if someone has, has seen this video and they're absolutely fascinated by the system, they think they might need one, it's a massive investment. Mm -hmm. How do they know they can trust Prima Power to implement the right system for them? We have been doing this for a long, long time. Um, the, our heritage going back in systems goes back decades. Um, so we've got an awful lot of systems installed around the world. They're all doing the same sort of work. So we have a huge amount of experience, a huge amount of expertise. And what we do is a very consultative approach with the customer. We've got machines that we call on and we configure to suit the customer's requirements, but we sit down and explore every requirement there is there. How much material, what type of material, what thicknesses, what forms, features and um, design variants are they going to put through that system. So the idea behind it is that you configure something that is able to suit the production demands for now and for the future. Mm -hmm.